And passive communicators, I think their hallmark really is that they don't express their feelings or their thoughts, their opinions, nothing. So, and really what happens generally with passive communicators is that they've been deferring to others for so long that I don't think they even know their own thoughts or feelings. They've just become so out of touch with their feelings uh, that they can't identify them well. And what happens when you have been deferring to other people, you know, having other people make the choices, having other, you know, if someone else is angry, then you don't have a right to say what you were going to say in your head. So you stop. What happens after uh, really even a short period of time is that you get out of touch with what a feeling is. It's sort of like um, for pe- if you o- people who overeat, you know, who, who are, let's say, morbidly obese or something and are overeating, they've gotten out of touch with their hunger. When are they really hungry? What the, Something that they have a cue for as hunger is likely not hunger at that point, right? It's something else, but they, they've kind of um, put that together. And that's what happens with things when we've overdone them or underdone them. We, you know, done too much of it or too little of it. We get we get out of touch with our own sink, you know, where we're sinking with ourselves. So what happens with passive communicators is they often don't even respond in a, in a hurt or angry way <clears throat> when something icky happens, right? So something bad happens that you or I would be thinking, oh my gosh, how are they not really pissed? And, but the problem is they end up with this super high threshold for painful situations. And so that's why they're not responding the way you think they quote unquote should, because their threshold has been raised so high. They, again, they're so out of touch. They're, they're eating so much food for lack of a better metaphor that I can think of right now that they don't even realize that they're full or that they have a feeling or that something else is happening. So this, so what happens again is that they're, 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 what's going on isn't matching what, or doesn't seem to other people to match what's going on in the outside isn't, doesn't seem to be matching what's going on in the inside. Um, and again, this person is likely someone who has other people make decisions for them so they can avoid any conflict or tension. And that could be something, uh, something super simple, like where we're going to eat tonight, you know, now I'm a Libra and I don't really care often where we eat because we all know I love food. So I'll usually eat almost anywhere. However, that doesn't mean I am not a passive communicator. (laughs) So Again, you have to think of this as a whole, not as think of, well, that one thing doesn't match me or that one thing does match me. So that's what I am that I'm going to, I'm giving this as an example so that you can, you got to feather out what the feeling of what I'm talking about. And in general, I state my opinion quite a bit, as we know, you're like, yeah, Abby, that's all I hear is your opinion. Um, And, but there's certain things that aren't as important to me and I am very clear often. And as a matter of fact, I make so many uh, decisions all day. I state my opinion so much that when times come up that I, that I don't need to, it actually feels great. It feels like a relief to me sometimes to just, you know, not like, yeah, we could eat any, <laughs> whatever you want to go is fine. But, um, and Gary will tell you, when I have a preference, I say it. If, if I'm really in the mood for, you know, I got to have Italian food tonight. If I really, you know, I must have sushi. If I feel it, I'll say it. But again, if I don't need to, I won't. So, you know, again, take in, take all this into consideration as I'm talking. So, because passive communicators really, what I think is that, you know, or one of the things is at the core is that they just suck at, I say with love, because I love you. No, I love you. They suck at establishing any boundaries. And even if they do occasionally set a boundary, they likely won't assert themselves if someone doesn't hold the boundary. And so here's what happens. So they, again, either don't have a boundary or they occasionally do, but the people just trample over them because nothing ever gets said. So they start getting resentful. And these resentments are building up. But remember, again, this is a person who doesn't even know that they have a feeling. They're not aware of it. And this 
And remember, again, their threshold is really high for crap, for bad things. So what happens is these upsets, these dents in the car, you know, dent, 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 you know, keep happening and they build up over time. And then there's a tipping point. There's, there's a hundredth drop in the cup and they explode. This passive person will explode like a volcano. And what I see a lot is it's over something small. And so they're... The let's say their partner is like, oh my God, I, we've, we've had this talk a hundred times. Why are you freaking out now? Or, you know, I did all the, I did A, B, and C, which were really horrible and you didn't say a thing. And now I leave a, a knife on the counter with some peanut butter on it. And you're telling me you want a divorce. Like what gives? And so the person you're usually interacting with, or maybe somebody at work or whatever, <clears throat> they are reacting in a weird way with you because you've never acted this way and it's so out of left field. And again, it's usually over something because it's just that hundredth drop in the cup. It's just that last straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. So what happens for you if you're passive, a passive communicator is that you're full of shame, guilt, regret because you got so upset. And you're embarrassed. You, you're thinking it to yourself. Oh my God, why was I yelling divorce over the peanut butter, you know, knife on the counter? What is wrong with me? And that drives you back to being passive again. So you think, oh, I can't trust my feelings. I'm out of control. I don't know how, you know, whatever. You, you think all these bad things. I, I know. Right now, you're listening. <laughs> you're, you you're passive. If anybody who's passive is listening right now going, oh my God, Abby's in my house. She's in my head. I can't believe this. I kind of am. No, I'm not because again, th this hopefully will help you feel better that you understand that this is so common that this happens to so many people. So it, that I can say it like this and it feels like it's only you and it's not. So the pattern keeps you stuck. You know, this, you, you say, you finally say something, but you explode because you don't do it right. And then you feel guilt and regret and shame. And then you go back to being passive and then it happens again. So you feel depressed. You end up feeling depressed. You feel so stuck and hopeless. Or some people just get really anxious because they're, your life, it just feels out of control. It feels like you can't control anything. So either way, right, it becomes a really huge problem, as you might imagine.